I'm speechless right now, and you know, some people in the room may not believe that, but I, I really am. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so happy and, and humbled, and just, I'm so glad to see everybody. You know, and this is our family. You know, this is our family. My brother just walked in the room. Yes, this is our family, and you know, I just, I'm so happy that Phil and I, you know, finally get to do this. And just to give you some brief history, about 10 years ago, um, I was running, helping to run a nonprofit in Brownsville. That's where I was born and raised, and I'll tell everybody who's willing to listen, I'm from Brownsville. And, uh, yes. And I got many of my Brownsville family here tonight, yes. And so, about 10 years ago, we, you know, I, what I realized early on, you know, I was new to nonprofit management, and what I realized early on is that it's very important to join organizations. It's very important to be part of um, associations that help take your business to the next level, right? And so I happened to find out about the National Black Chamber of Commerce that came after the uh, organization Mr. Kraft told you about. And so when I looked, when I found it, I said, oh, I have to join the New York chapter. Where is it? Well, there wasn't one. And so when I called the um, executive director, they said, well, someone is in the process of putting one together. They're not far from you, so you might want to call them up and maybe collaborate. I said, fine, you know, I don't have any problems collaborating because I think we need, that's a mistake that a lot of us had not made. You know, we think we can do everything ourselves, and we can. You know, everybody plays an important role, so I had no problem. And so the folks that I reached out to were uh, affiliated with Phil, and we had a couple of meetings, and it didn't come to fruition at that point. But what I've come to learn is that it's not about the appointed time, like our wonderful Ayala Bazad said, is about the anointed time. And this is the anointed time. Okay? And so, when Bill told me about the Long Island African American Chamber of Commerce and, and Mr. Scott and what you all were doing, I said, well, I gotta get him on Brooklyn. What are you doing in Brooklyn? Then he mentioned, where's Tony Her Beely? So he mentioned Tony, you know, and I'm like, I don't care how. I'm going to be involved. I need to be involved because it's Brooklyn, you know. And so, lo and behold, worked out, right? So we're here tonight. So that's the history. <laughs> so this didn't happen. It wasn't an overnight sensation by any stretch of the imagination. It's not going to be an overnight sensation. We have a lot of work ahead of us. And you know, as the borough president said earlier, we have close to a million people and uh, black people in uh, Brooklyn. And I just heard at a recent presentation by Assemblyman Charles Barron that East Brooklyn actually showed an increase of black residents. So that's really important because Brownsville and East New York are really the last two strongholds in Brooklyn where we are the majority of the residents. And so one of the things that we would be, we are on a mission to do is make sure that we also own the economy. You know, and a lot of you all know I have a blog talk show, Black Reconstruction. I talk about Black Reconstruction all the time. You know, that time in history post-slavery where we owned and lived in amongst each other. You know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Rosewood, Florida. There were places in Georgia, North Carolina, where we were the majority. We owned the businesses. We had hospitals. Everything. Then comes Jim Crow. The Black Codes. Right? Then we have... Um, the thing called integration that everybody thought was oh so great. Okay, so we've learned some lessons, right? And it's not, you know, I'm not saying that it, it, I think it was necessary, but now here we are. And so I wanted to show a quick video just to sort of, um, so my, my reflections was sort of like, let's look back at history, let's look back at the past, talk about our current state and where we're going forward and where we're going from today, tomorrow, and the future. Um, it's called the unequal race, and it sort of gives you a, it's a really quick video, but it shows what actually happened, and people may ask, well, what, is, what happened? Why does every other culture move ahead and we don't? Well, there's a reason for it, you know? And so, um, can you click play? I'm not sure if you, because you know we're having audio issues, but you might be able to. Okay, good. <laughs> 